Hi, and welcome to another episode of Python Bits. In this episode, we'll take a little sneak peek on what will be the big news when Python 3.6 is shortly released. Maybe by the time you see this, it's already released because it's only a few days away. But let's see what it has in store for us. Okay, so we have a new Python version coming up, 3.6. And uh, in this Python base, we're going to take a little look at some of the news in this version. We will not look at everything because there are lots of things in there, but we will take a look at some of the things that might be the most useful ones, the ones that we as everyday Python developers will encounter and use and see. So the first thing we should do is go into the Python documentation page at docs.python.org and we'll see this page. And what we can do now, we, we end up with the current version and right now this is 3.5.2. So we can go up and select the 3.6 version. So we end up in the 3.6 documentation and we can take a look at what's new in Python 3.6. And here at the very top, we have a little list of some new syntax features. And this is something that we will take a look at, at least the first three of them. The first thing is formatted string literals. And that is a new way for us to format strings. We, we had a number of ways of doing that previously in Python, but now we have yet another one. And I must admit, I really like this one. It's really neat and nice. And uh, this is something I will use. So we will see what that is and how that one works. The uh, next one here, the uh, underscores in numeric literals, that one is also interesting, even though it will not change the world or anything like that. But it will make our programs a little bit easier to read and understand when it comes to numeric values. So it is useful. We'll find it in most programming language or not, maybe not most, but in many programming languages nowadays. And now we also have it in Python. So let's see what that is because I really like that one. The third one here, the syntax for variable annotations is something that we already had for functions. So we could already say that, for example, the parameter to a function is of a specific type or are supposed to be of specific type. So you could say that this x, the parameter x should be an int. It is not anything that Python will care about. It will ignore it. But the tools that we are using can use this information to give us hints that we might use this function in the wrong way. Uh, same thing for return values. But now we also have this for variables. So we will see, we'll take a little look at that. The asynchronous generators and comprehensions is also something that is very interesting, but we will not cover it in this video. Uh, maybe we will come back and look at them in a later Python bits video because it's a really neat thing. But I don't feel that this is something that we will use in our everyday Python programming life, but when we need to use it, it's really powerful and, and uh, interesting. So we might come back to that one. But the last thing we're going to look at is this first thing here in Sci, uh, sorry, C Python implementation improvements. Um, and that is the dict. The dictionary has undergone a total re-implementation. So it's much more efficient. Uh, it uses less memory. As we can see here, they state that it should use 20 to 25% less memory. Um, but that is, that is great. Uh, but it's all under the hood. So it's not anything that will affect the way we use dictionaries. But there is something that is new to dictionaries that we will see. And we will take a look at that as well. So let's switch over and try these four things out and, and see what they can offer for us. Let's try this out. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is the uh, new string literal. 
The latest addition to formatting strings we had was the string format function. And this is kind of a variant of that. So what I will do, I will write something here now so we can uh, see how the string format function worked and then we can compare it to the new string literal that we now have. And to do this, what I will do is I will create two variables, um, a name, and we can insert John in that, and an age. So let's say that John is 34 years old. So now that we have these two variables, we can uh, create a string and format it using the string format function. So we'll do that, call it msg. And what we can do is say hi, and then a curly brace and a zero and an end curly brace. And then maybe a comma, you are and a new curly brace, one, and an end curly brace, years old. And after the string, we say format, and then we can pass in the uh, value that we want for the first curly brace is zero here. So that would be name. So we uh, insert name here. And then the variable we want to insert instead of the one, that is age. So something like that. And then we can print the uh, message. So uh, let's see this one in action. And as you can see now, it works fine. We formatted the string, we inserted the uh, name and the age into the string. So let's see what the string literal has to offer us now. Um, compared to this old string format function. So let's call this msg2 and we will create the same string. So we say hi and we still have the curly brace. But now instead of inserting this number that indicates what variable from the list of variables sent to the string format function we're going to use, we can now insert the uh, variable directly here like this inside the curly braces. But in order for this to work, we need to proceed the string with an F like this. So now it will pick up the name variable and insert it instead of the curly braces and the variable at this location. So let's finish this one. Then a curly brace, H and curly brace years old. So let's print that one. Like that. So let's run that one. We see that now we have the same two strings. And the thing that I like about this one is that with the help of this, we, we have all the information up front. We see that, okay, this is at this location, the name variable will be inserted. In the old string format function, we had a number here. And even so, the, the number can be optional. So if they came, come in the same order here, we can skip the numbers. But we have the curly brace and we have an, this is an indication that, okay, this is a location or a placeholder where a variable will be inserted. That's all we know. So in order to know which variable will be inserted here, we need to go to the end of this line inside the string format function to see, okay, it's name that will be inserted here. And then we go back and read this string and we come up here to a new placeholder. And then again, we have to go over and look at the string format function and see, okay, now it's H. In this new string literal version, we, we have the information up front. We see it immediately. We can, we can say that, okay, we have the name here. We have the H here. Great. So we don't have to, to go back and forth to find this uh, information. So this is really nice. This is really powerful and we can do other stuff with that as well. But, but it works pretty much as the string format function. The difference is that we insert the variables directly where they belong. So. Let's take a look at the uh, numeric literals and see what that is. 
So let's say that I have a variable called x and set it to a rather large number, something like this. Now, when we have a number like this, it's always hard to tell if we have the right amount of digits, the right number of digits here. So what we have done, we started to count one, two, three, four, five, and then we lost track and need to start over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And a person reading our code would need to do the same thing to go over and, and check that what number this is. So what we can do now is that we can insert underscores into a number like this. We can insert them anywhere. It's up to us. But the value here is much easier to read. It's easier to see that we have the right amount of digits. So it will help us avoid mistakes. And also it adds to the readability of the code. It's easier for someone reading the code to see what number this is. So this is all it does. Python itself will ignore this information. It, it doesn't care about um, these literals. So if we print it, we'll see that it, it will print it in the same way as we are used to. So Python itself doesn't, don't care about this at all. It's only for readability and a way for us to, to see more clearly what number we have. So I think this is also something that is uh, small and uh, maybe not groundbreaking news, but, but uh, really interesting and a nice thing to have. The third thing was the variable annotation. Um, and what this means is that we can now indicate what type a variable should have. It doesn't force us to have it. And we do it this way. Now we say we have a variable x, we assign 10 to it as usual. But the colon and int here indicates that this should be used for, for integers. But nothing stops us from inserting anything else. So we can still uh, insert a string into this one because Python will, again, ignore this information. So this is not anything that Python will care about. So if we try this with a string, we will see that it will actually run and do exactly what we are used to. But it is a good hint that what we are expecting is an integer. But if we change this into something else. So let's say I have a variable called values and I want this to be a list of integers. And then I can set this to an empty list like this. Now, <clears throat> let's see what happens if I append something else to this. I append a string to this one and we print values like this. And let's execute that one. We see we have a list with a single string in it that works. But if I look here now, I'm using PyCharm for this. So what PyCharm will do is it will inform me that it expected an int, but it got a string instead. So it will give me a little hint here that I might be misusing this one uh, in a way it wasn't intended for. So this is what these uh, annotations does. They, they don't, Python will not check that we're using the right variables, but the tools that we're using can do that and give us some information that we might be using this in the wrong way. So the last thing we're going to look at is dictionaries. So let's create a dictionary. It doesn't, this looks exactly the same way that we are used to. So nothing new here. So let's create um, a person and we have a name for the person. And that name will be something, Sue Smith. And this person has an age. 
and the age for this person will be 45 so it has a location as well call it city and um, let's say London for this so nothing new here it looks the same they the dictionary created under the hood here will be more efficient uh, use less memory and so on but from the syntax point of view there are nothing new here but if we print this so if we print the person dictionary we will see that it will actually print it in the same order as I inserted the items into the dictionary so name comes first and then age and then city and doesn't matter if I run this over and over again this will always be the result so what this means is that from Python 3.6 dictionaries are ordered we had ordered dict before that we could use but now the normal dictionary will be ordered so just to see the difference here let's move over to Python 3.5 and see what it looks like there so here I have the same program in Python 3.5 so let's run this one and we'll see that now city is first and the name is in the middle and H is lost and if I rerun this um, a couple of times we will see that now H is in the middle we see that H is first name is here and city is lost and so on so up until 3.5.2 dictionaries were unordered and we couldn't predict in what way things would come out but from 3.6 dictionaries are now ordered so we will always know that things will come out the same way from them as we inserted things into them so that was four of the news in the new python version so um, i hope you enjoyed that and i see you again soon for a new episode of python bits